Good morning. It's Saturday, the 21st of February, 2015. When, welcome, welcome, welcome to another hour of fun, boys and girls. Yes, and who is the first message in today? It's young Ryan, who is in the Netherlands. Good morning, Ryan in Holland, who will be unable to call in today because his microphone is broken. <sighs> there, must, <coughs> there must be another way, Ryan. How else can you call in? How else are you going to do it? And good morning to Matt Martins in Canada, who's with us this morning. Morning, Matt, who has recently received his United Kingdom Talk iPhone 5 case. It has arrived. I told you, sometimes these ta- things take a terrible amount of time to arrive. We also have with us this morning Daniel in Camberley, who sings, sends in the... Now let me work this out. The, the, th- the third message of the day. Three messages within the space of a few seconds. That's not all. Good morning, Daniel. Uh, Terry H is with us this morning, says, The clip of the mirror ball falling down is hilarious. Well, it wasn't when it just hit my head, Terry. (laughs) How long have you not been watching for then, Terry? God, that clip's been there for weeks now, dear. We changed just in the new year. I do like to do a new opening now and again. How's your opening, Terry? I hope it's hope it's well and full. Uh, good morning to Shania. Oh, wait, you're right. Afternoon. Afternoon, Shania. I believe you were suddenly realised. Didn't you suddenly realise you had a, an exam this week? Let me just check that. I'm sure I saw that on your little uh, Facebook wall. She's, Shania is a paper girl. And I noticed Shania... Always smiling in your photographs. I like to see that. I like to see people smiling. There's so many miserable people about, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? There really is. And Shania, let me see if there is a single, a single picture of her not smiling. No, I can't find one. I can't find one. This week, she says her exam timetable has come through in a post. She is now in panic mode. First exam is on the 22nd of May. Oh, don't worry about that, Shania. I never used to worry. I really didn't. I didn't. I didn't revise or anything. I hated it. Oh God, I hated that so much doing exams and all that in school. When you sit in that great big hall, weren't you? Great big hall with all these other people, and you look at the clock, and you know the the exam is I don't know three hours long, and you're sitting there just before nine o'clock, all upright. The papers are there, turned upside down. You've got your pen and everything, and you keep rearranging your desk, don't you? Put that pen over there. Put that ruler over there. What's that thing, the, the little half protractor? Is that a protractor? Or is a protractor the triangle thing? I can't remember now. Oh, um, I can't remember. Anyway, put my protractor over there. I move my... Tr- oh, no, I'm going to... Oh, no, that's in the wrong place. I put the pencil there. I put the pen over there. Um, and and the, the, just go, and then the clock ticks around to nine o'clock. And unlike the show, there's no like intro film or clock chiming or anything like that. You just turn over the paper, don't you? And then you look at the questions. And. <laughs> <coughs> More often than not, I'd look at these questions and I looked at the clock, looked at the questions, looked at the clock and I went, what am I going to do for three hours? (laughs) (coughs) Oh God, I was so bored with it. I hated it, Shania. I really did. Maybe I wouldn't. and, and, And revising is even worse than doing the exam. All that time at home spent sifting through pages. Well, I don't know. Are you on a laptop now? I bet you haven't even got books to learn from. Yeah, Shania, that's a point, actually. Do you still have, like, bags full of books? Or is it all on an iPad or a tablet or something like that? We used to have a great big school bag and we'd have to carry these so heavy books around all over the place. You knock people as you go through the corridor. The London Oratory School in Fulham. I hated it. I didn't hate the school. I hated the lessons, virtually all of them. I just found them boring. I'd sit there and this teacher would be waffling on and on. 
God, I'd be so bored. It must be even worse at university. You see these other... I didn't go to university. I couldn't, couldn't wait to get out of school, to be honest. Although I loved... I loved the school. I did. I just didn't like the lessons. There was... Uh, <coughs> there were certain teachers that I thought were OK. You know, the certain ones that I really didn't like at all. But I just got so bored at the lessons. Which ones? Well, most of them. Even the music ones. And Shakespeare. I've told you before about Shakespeare. God, how does anyone understand what's going on in that? I haven't got a clue. It's all in... Might as well be written in, you know, French. And I couldn't do that either. French. People learn Chinese, don't they? How do they do that? How do you learn Chinese? Oh, anyway, Shania. Oh, Shania's answered. My English exam last year, I turned the paper over and didn't understand the questions. There you go. You're the same as me, Shania. Waste of time. Get a job at McDonald's. You know what to do. Pick out the burger from the frozen thing, put it on the thing, cook it for three minutes each side and shove it in a bun. You haven't got to think about anything else, have you? I haven't got to worry about exams or anything like that. <laughs> She says, I still have loads of books and folders full of stuff. Ah, oh, right, OK. And she ended up getting a B in the English exam, even though she didn't understand the questions. Oh, I'm very impressed. I got, we had O-levels when I was at school, and I got English and Physics O-levels, grade C. And that's all I got. <laughs> Everything else was below that. <coughs> I got... Um, do you know what? <coughs> I'm I was all right earlier. I'm coughing away here. Can I just go and get my? Let me go and get my asthma thing and have a little little spray of my asthma thing. Stay there a minute. Uh, talk amongst yourselves for a second. One minute. There we are. Well, that might be a bit better. Sorry, gang. Sorry. I think I might have been over singing last night. I did about three songs at a karaoke I did last night at a place called uh, Central Station in King's Cross. And uh, it was, I was all right. Actually, the voice was all right last night. It's gone this morning. So there we are, Shanae. Well, don't worry too much about your May exam. You know, what's the worst thing that you can go wrong? You fail. That's it. You fa but you're not a failure, are you? You'll find something else to do. I did. I worked for British... I, I, I went and worked in a shop then. Um, actually, it was my mum who wrote off. She wrote off to the post office, the British Telecom at the time, because uh, I wanted to become an engineer. But you needed qualifications, which, of course, I didn't have because I didn't do the exams. So I went in the back door and became an operator, director of inquiries. And then in those days, and I'm sure it's probably the same in some companies now, once you were inside the company... It was easy to go from A to B. So even though I didn't have the exams to become an engineer, a few years later, I transferred from being a director and inquiry operator to an engineer. And that, that was a job I really loved doing, it, actually, being a telephone engineer. Oh, it's great. Going in and out of people's houses, fixing their telephones, up and down telegraph poles, putting wires together. I loved it. In a little yellow van, a little yellow van. And I covered um, <coughs> Wandsworth, Putney... Roehampton, Mortlake, Richmond, Ham, East Sheen areas. And my favourite area of all that being Ham, it was kind of out the way. It was right on the edge of the area. And no one used to bother you down there. I love that job, Shania. So don't worry too much. And you, you do your best and that's it. No one can complain if you do your best, all right? Good morning to Kieran. Morning, Kieran, who says, uh, loving the Tiffany cat. Ah, oh, you've noticed the new Tiffany cat. I'm surprised that Daniel hasn't mentioned that. Daniel, my item of interest today is a Tiffany cat. Do you like that? This was... See, you haven't been watching the short shows, have you? Kieran, that is a present from Eloise in the United States of America. She sent that all the way from the United States of America as a birthday present. Look, and it lights up. It's lit up. Isn't it lovely? I'll turn the light off and turn the light on. <coughs> 
those of you with sound only, it's a cat made out of little coloured bits of glass. It's brown and white. And it, it, you know, it actually looks like my cat because she's the same colours. Brown and white. I'll just put that back there just a minute. And I was going to... How shall I arrange that? There we go. Is that like that or looking at you? How do you want it? Is that better? I'm not quite sure whether to put... I want it in my living room because I've got a few Tiffany lamps there. Um, but on the other hand, I think it looks quite nice behind me there, don't you? On the sort of rack there. I need, I need something to put it on. At the moment, it's, it's stood up on a few CDs. So I've got now... Um, I think I've got about four different Tiffany lamps now. There's the cat one. I've got a butterfly one downstairs. There's one that Ronnie, like a lamp lamp, you know, proper lamp, um, that Ronnie bought me for my birthday. And a little church. And they've all got lights inside them. Tiffany lamps. <clears throat> my birth mother says I have become a Tiffany collector. Yes, more about that in a moment. More about that in a moment. Uh, good morning to... Uh, oh, Kieran says, of course I've been watching. I've, I'm a devoted viewer. That's what we want. Devotion. Maybe we should have hymns written to glorify the programme. Not me. Hymns written to the, to the... What do you think? Like a church. Is it like a church service watching this show? Terry H says, I've seen um, your opening video before. Just commenting, it still makes you me laugh. Yes, anything that's sort of detrimental to other people does appear to amuse people, doesn't it? If you look around on YouTube, you'll find all sorts of people falling over places, you know, planes having very bad landings, and inside the cabin you see all these people screaming their heads off. Oh, it's hilarious. We do like to... <laughs> We do like to see other people in pain and distress, don't we? Why is that? Is that why so many people watch these celebrity-based programmes? Celebrity this and celebrity that. Because they, they like to see people in pain and suffering, especially that jungle one. Oh, vile. I mean, I don't, I've watched it a couple of times, but not very nice. How could you eat all those live witchetty grub things and, uh, and, and having cockroaches poured over your head and some of them end up in your ear don't they i remember seeing one and, and he was going like this you know after and then a bloke had to come with a pair of tweezers and pull it out what if only half came out and it broke in your ear oh no we can't be doing any of that uh morning to ben who's with us this morning good morning ben oh do you know what ben i still haven't looked at the back of that computer Perhaps I should have a quick... Shall I have a quick look now, Ben? Hang on a minute. Oh, where's my glasses? I've lost them again. Again. Do you know, I've lost... Oh, look, there they are. I keep losing pairs of glasses. Now, I don't buy... Um, I generally don't buy glasses from the optician. Because they're like 100-odd quid, aren't they? So now I go into the supermarket... And most of the supermarkets do them. And they've got all these different glasses like this on the um, on, on a rack. <coughs> all different strengths. And they've got a little bit of writing there. And what you have to do is, is go back like a couple of feet, um, I don't know, uh, about half a, what is it, half a metre, a couple of feet from the, from the writing. You put the glasses on and you see whichever ones look, look, look OK to you. And this, this does vastly improve my um vision like if i'm looking at the computer i've got two screens either side of me if i'm looking at the computer right it does look i can read it but it's a little bit blurred not too bad if i put my glasses on it suddenly becomes all crisp and um uh what's the word crisp and um not blurred I don't, i'm not sure not sure what the word is there blurred or not blurred can't remember. We've got someone on the line. Good morning, Millie. Hello, how are you? Hello, Millie. How are you today, darling? I'm good. I'm real good. Um, I just wanted to update you real quick. I don't have any update on my mom's surgery. She had... Oh, she I thought this was going to be a happy call, Millie. A happy call. Let's, well, there is, there is happy stuff. Yes. But I just want to get I just want to get the yucky stuff out of the way first. Um, no update yet on my mom's uh, blood clot surgery. 
but that more than likely means that no news is good news. But as soon as I hear something, I will certainly let you know. Next bit of news, my show went really, really well on the 5th of February. And the next one is, the next one where I'm going to be on is going to be on the 26th of March. And where can people hear that, Millie? That can be heard on Radio Namaste, N-A-H-M-A-S-T-E. There is a fan page on Facebook where that can be reached. Just go to the search bar on, on Facebook and type that type radio namaste in and do you know what and will be in the show this week you mean next month yes that i don't that i don't know yet um because um that's all right there's nothing wrong with it i never know what i'm going to do in my show millie not until right. like five it, minutes before i sit down there i've got a few bits and pieces you know all over the desk and what have you as you well know yep. but i don't really know what i'm going to do Yep, Sarah does the same thing, and, you know, yes, yesterday's show was kind of <laughs> a bit of a blooper because she had technical difficulties, but she muddled through just fine, and she also wanted me to pass on to everyone that um, she really appreciates everyone um, from the UK who has given the fan page a like. Good. when I when I first plugged it she really she really wanted me to thank everybody for that so um, but yeah um, my my return to the airwaves went really well oh I'm I mean, glad to hear it Millie I was very I'm very pleased with that and a week from this a week from yesterday I'm off to Texas yee Exactly. <laughs> have they got horses there? Um, yes, there are horses there, but I also have a childhood friend that lives in Austin, Texas that I haven't seen for years. Yes. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go spend a few days with her. Yes. Keep talking, yeah. Millie. I just wanna go around the back of my computer and check something out. But keep talking, I can hear you, darling, all right? Okay. My little torch ready. I'll be back in a second. Carry on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning, Chris. <laughs> but, 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 hey? I'm kidding. Keep talking. I can't. You can hear me, but I can't hear you. Uh oh. Keep talking. What are, what are you up to, my darling? Keep talking. I am. What are you doing? I'm looking for something. One minute. <laughs> looking for something. Why don't you? Why don't you look? For why don't you look for your head while you're at it? Shut up! <laughs> Sit <back>. Shut up! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> He's always teasing me, so I have to get my digs in whenever I can. <laughs> That's it. I'm looking for a um <coughs> a HDMI socket on my back of the computer but i don't think i've got one i'm gonna have to pull it out later because because uh ben who is my technical help person and all-round good guy um told me i might be able to plug another screen into the computer if i've got a hdmi socket uh, just for the skype because sometimes i'm the calls are flashing and i miss it because there's so much going on in front of me that's why that is my um uh, my, uh, uh millie but i can't find one as it as it stands at the moment never mind <laughs> is it was is it cold there at the moment? Because Matt Martin, yes. Matt Martin's in Canada, is written in. He says, "How is the weather in your part of the world this morning in Winnipeg? It is minus twenty-seven, <laughs> with a wind chill of minus thirty-nine, dear. Oh, I'm glad yeah. you're not there. Oh, look who it is. My nephew Jimmy Butler's is with us as well this morning. Good morning, nephew Jimmy, who says, I am here. He says, you actually look like you might know something with those glasses on. Do I? Is that right, Jim? Do I look all right? Do, do, do the glasses suit me? I think everything sort of bursts into sharpness. That's the word I was looking for, sharpness and clearness. Even you are quite sharp and clear today, Millie. Well, thank you very much. That is indeed a compliment. Coming yes. 
coming from the king of United Kingdom talk. Queen, dear, queen. Oh. And Ben says... Oh, I've lost it now. Where's Ben's message gone? Where did I, see what I mean? I need a... Oh, I look like Harry Potter with these glasses on. Perhaps Actually, a young... Maybe you I look do. like a younger version of Harry Potter. I don't know. What do you reckon? Um, no, you're <laughs> missing that. You're missing too much hair for that. <laughs> <sighs> nice to talk to you, Millie. You have a lovely day, darling, all right? I, I will. You take care. Bye-bye, Millie. Bye. It's Millie in Minnesota and the US of A. Always a nice, uh, nice to have a little bit of a chat with Millie. Good morning to Anne, who's in Lewisham. Says, good morning, Chris. I have my tea and up apple puff. Oh, no, Anne. You're supposed to be on a diet, dear. Remove the pastry and just have the apple. It wouldn't be very nice, though, would it? I do like an apple puff. Some of them haven't got much apple in it. And you do wonder, when you buy these pastries, um, and they, they advertise them as apple this or black, and then you, well, you buy, and it's barely, any, look, barely a slice of apple. And how much are apples? Not expensive. Barely a slice of apple in there. I hope, I hope your one is stuffed, Anne. I really do hope your one is stuffed. So, good morning, Chris. I have my tea and apple puff all nice and ready to enjoy listening to the nation's favourite internationally claimed broadcaster of the year. Well, you've got Terry Wogan on then. It's not me, is it? What do most of your viewers and listeners like Ben and Terry message you on? Is it best to use Skype? Uh, yes. Yes, it, it, it is best to use Skype always. OK. Uh, Ryan... Young Ryan in Holland says, you look like my dad with those glasses. Oh, no. Do I? <laughs> I always remember a girl um, was dancing in a place I was working with. And she came over to me, this girl, and she said to me, um, can I ask you a question? And I thought, you know, here, here we go again. This is about... It's about five years ago. Here we go again. The girl's going to say, have I got a girlfriend or am I married? Because you know, a lot of these young girls, they like married men. What's all that about? What is all that about? They like that. Glasses on or off, by the way, boys and girls. Can we have a quick vote on that? Glasses on or glasses off? What do you prefer? <laughs> You've got all blurry again now, but never mind. Anyway, so... Uh, uh, I said, yeah, go on. She said, you, you really don't mind me asking it? I said, no, not at all. She says, you see that boy over there? And I looked over, yeah, young lad, you know, young lad, pint of lager in hand, probably about 22, 23. I said, yeah, well, he won't leave me alone. Do you mind if I tell him? And I thought she was going to ask me to pretend that I'm her boyfriend. Do you mind if I tell him you're my dad? I was not impressed. I was not impressed at all. Oh, go on, laugh. It's not funny. Tell me I'm your dad indeed. What's a liberty? Uh, Kieran says, have you been watching EastEnders live week? Who could Lucy, Lucy Bill? Nope, don't watch it. Don't watch that or Coronation Street or Neighbours or Home and Up Yours or anything like that. Don't watch any of these programmes. I watch real life drama like Casualty, Star Trek, Doctor Who. Um... What's that murder on Paradise Island? What is it? Death in Paradise. I like that. I like that. Uh, Benidorm, which I think is finished now. <coughs> but I don't watch any so-called soaps. Load of old rubbish. Don't watch them at all. So there's your answer to that, OK? Uh, no, don't watch any of that, Kieran. And Terry H says, good morning. He said, I heard my name then. Do you know it's not good for your eyes to wear non-prescription glasses? Yeah, that's what they... Why is that then? That's what they tell you. Don't be fooled with any of that, Terry. What a load of old mokum that is. Don't believe that. They want you to buy the glasses in the opticians for like 200 quid. That's why they say that. Don't you dare believe any of that. Call on line 300... 5,217. Good morning, line 3,517. Is that Rory in full ham? It is, Chris. How are you? How are you? Good morning, Rory. That conversation with Millie was hilarious. Do you like Millie? 
It was, it, that, that, that was really funny, actually. That she was... is queen of all of Minnesota. People <laughs> go past her, her apartment and they bow, they genuflect on one knee and say a couple of prayers. Gosh, I haven't been to Minnesota. I've been, I've been to Florida, though. I, li I, I, like, I like America. Oh. Yeah. We like Florida. I went there with my nephew last January. He's with us this morning. Would you like to say hello to him? Say hello, yeah, Jimmy. Sure. Hello, Jimmy. How, um, is, he, is, he, is he writing on Skype? No, no. He's never called in, actually, Jimmy. I, I've seen him on the, vid the videos, though. Yes, yes. Did you, yeah. see the, did you see the ones from Florida last year? Um... I don't think I did actually. I'll see if they're still on YouTube. You know, right. you know, you were talking about glasses. Yes. Well, I wear glasses too. I think it get, I, I I wear them on the basis it gives me a false air of intelligence, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's what Jimmy just said to me. Is that it makes you look like you actually know something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I I wear them to interviews actually. I'm, I, I I think I had them when, when when we do the karaoke. I wear them, don't I? Oh yes, yeah. I yeah, have the same. Yeah. I have the same style as my. I actually have exactly the same style as my late granddad. The same style of glasses. You know, I feel. Yeah. I, I I know you can't see me, but I feel I should go. My name is Michael Caine. My name is. Don't, you're only supposed to blow the bloody door off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! When are I, you going to come to yourself down to the cherry tree, Rory? You keep I, saying you're going to come on a Sunday night. Yeah, I was going to. Um, I, I'm. Um, are you? Are you, are you doing it tomorrow? I am there tomorrow. Yes. Uh, is it? Is it? Is it at seven? Yes, it is. I'll. Um, I'll pop down tomorrow if I can. Oh, good! At last. Yeah. It's, and I feel. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll come with a pre. pre, 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 pre I can't say it. Pre prepared set. Oh, All right, yeah, yeah. Thanks, yes. Yeah, you okay. can come and do that. You'll you'll get to sing more there because it's not so busy as the other ones. Right. Okay. I, I I'll um I'll 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 do some uh I'll I'll, I'll I'll try and pick I'll, I'll try and pick some ones that I'm good at some sort of Rory cla classics if they're if they're Rory classics only at the Cherry Tree Sunday night the... seven till eleven in <laughs> East Dulwich. Sounds good to me. Hey, uh, um, oh yeah, you, um, apple puffs. I like. I you were talking about that just now. I like apple puffs, and there's a there's a school of thought that the, that the best way to make an apple puff is to chase it around the garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the clean ones are the best, Rory. Absolutely, the clean absolutely. ones are the best. <laughs> you, apple you, you, puffs. Do you like um? I, uh, my favourite apple pies, and I haven't had one for oh months now. Actually, they do them in Waitrose, individual apple pies. Right. Is that? Is that, the, is that the Mr. Kipling ones or is that different? No, 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 not the Mr. Kipling one. I find the Mr. Kipling ones, they're like kind of an apple mush rather than yeah. apple pieces. Uh, the ones, the, the, the ones on the sort of uh, cake counter in yes. Waitrose, I find are the best ones, yes. Right, I, I've had them actually. Yeah. Is I've there someone at the door, dear? S sorry? Was there someone at the door then? I heard you do something. Uh, no, that's Brenda, uh, my, my, my helper. She's gone, in, gone, in, gone into the bathroom. Oh, so. can she hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, she knows I'm talking to you, yeah. Oh, good morning, Brenda. Oh, she's in, uh, she's in the bathroom now. Oh, oh. You, 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 you can say good morning once she emerges. I, oh, OK, I, tell, tell me, is she cleaning? I, I think she's actually, yes, yes. Well, yes. maybe we should uh, uh, just let her get on with the job then, rather than wasting time talking to poor old me here, dear. <laughs> Do you know, it's so hot in here. I've just turned on my air conditioning. Yeah, I haven't been out today. I don't, I don't know what, 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 the, what the weather's like today here in Fulham. Uh, well, I looked on my external temperature to thermometer thing, and it says uh, it's eight degrees, so not freezing cold. Gosh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go out and wear my uh, my, my fake fur hat. I, I'm with. glad you got fake fur. Mm. I, I was um. At an awards ceremony thing. Oh God! It was. I was only there because I was working. I would never go to an awards ceremony, not yeah. even to collect an award. I think they are the most boring things ever. Who on earth thought of hiring a room, coming along with a load of cups, shoving a few television cameras in there, and then giving people cups? 
Who on earth ever come up with that idea? It's the most boring thing ever. And I'd like to thank this, and I'd like... And even nowadays, when they're on the telly and they do these things, they even put in a host who will swear now and again just to create some sort of bloody interest in the thing. Yes, I, yeah, yes. All the gay people, Rory, they love the Oscars. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Well, 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 well it's a bit... It's a bit like a prize giving at school, only it's souped up, really, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to one on, uh, the one I was working out on Thursday night, and there they all were, and I thought, I thought, so many of these are fixed. I actually came third in something, and I heard my name mentioned, because I wasn't paying any attention at all. <clears throat> and they're like, what's that? Well, who's, why are they shouting my name? Oh, you've come third in something. And I thought, well, that's funny. I haven't filled in any other forms myself, dear. You know, right. you, <laughs> usually to win these things, you fill in all the forms yourself or you get friends to fill them in and that sort of thing. That's how I've won before. I don't bother anymore because I know how the whole thing works. It's all a bloody fix. Waste of time. Award <laughs> shows. Do you like them, Rory? Uh, not really. Uh, they, 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 go, they go on for ages. That, oh. I, mean, I suppose you could watch certain bits where there are certain collages of what, what people have done, but really... If yes. you're in the audience, it must go on for hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said you didn't watch soaps. What do you watch? I forgot. Um, uh, do you watch documentaries and things? I do like documentaries. <laughs> um, like a soap, I suppose, is Casualty. That's like a soap, isn't it? Yeah. Would you say that? So I watch Casualty. Um, uh, Death on Death in Paradise. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the news on a lot. Benidorm, I like. Um, and they they do on the, certainly on the BBC they do these dry, oh I've just started watching Indians in Summer is it Indians in Summer uh, that that rings a vague bell what, 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 Channel what, Four what? Sunday nights that's quite good yeah that's about things going on in India in the summer uh -huh. um, but it, it's a, it's a story it's not a documentary. Right. So it's a, I think that's a ten-part series and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm into, I'm into science documentaries and music, music shows and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Particularly new, news, news is very good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you do you have a holiday book soon or, or no? Not? No holiday booked at all yet. I'm, I'm popping up my sister's, but only for one night in a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. That's for my niece's little girl's uh, christening thing right, church. Yeah. but I'll only be up there for the one night because that's that's all the uh, I'm quite busy in that with work at the moment you know yeah yeah well I, I, I'll see you to, I'll see you tomorrow night at the old uh, cherry oh, tree oh that's fantastic 7 till 11 you get a quiz there as well and you might win a bottle of wine it's all free uh, oh, oh wow I'll uh, I'll, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and be there before, before before 7 so we can get things organised with the with the wheelchair and stuff. Oh, oh and I, um, I, I'm planning to come in my uh, in my electric chair, which was a uh, which is uh, for fun. It's called the Batmobile. <laughs> the Bat, the Rory Mobile. It's called the yes. Rory Mobile. Yes, that's what uh, you want to call it. Have I seen that one? Um, I don't know actually. It, it, it actually fits into a taxi. It's quite it's quite compact. So okay. It, it looks. Hello, how many miles does it do on a charge? Um. I'm not sure. I I know you can go to I, I know you can go from where I am now to High Park. All oh, right, and, yeah. And back on one charge. Do, and get, mm. Have you ever run out of juice? Um, I I had once years ago when I was at school. I had a separate chair. And, uh, I, I I had a chair that could climb stairs. And, really? Uh, it, How does it do that then? It was well, well, well for its time. It was in, it was incredible. It was a stair climbing climbing wheelchair where it had separate wheels that rotated up and down the stairs. Well, I've never heard of such a thing. No, n n n did, neither had I until did, I had one. Did you feel safe on that? Um, partly. I, I and it was a bit like driving an articulated lorry. I don't. Um, I don't. I don't know if you remember Kit from Knight Rider. No, no, but it, no. Um, but it, but it felt, it felt it felt like I was in. Anyway, he was a talking car with all yes, kinds of yeah. oh, gas yes, and yes. things like that. Yeah, but you um, know when you're going upstairs in this thing, yeah, mm -hmm. are you like um, horizontal? Or are you tipped back as you go up the stairs? Um, 
No, no, it was fairly mm. central, really. It was a bit like a, uh, but you could move the move, move the chair back and forth. It was a bit like being in the, a moving dentist chair. Well, I've never heard of such a thing. Mm. I'm going to have a look at that later on. Let me look. chair climbing wheelchair. It was a stair, stair, stair. Uh, well, well, <coughs> well, well. When I had it, when, when I had it, which was in the eighties, in the late eighties, eighty nine. Yeah. For its time, it was it was the latest the latest invention. It was called the Mobility Mobility Two Thousand. Yeah, and I think they've changed it now. They must have upgraded it, but that's probably it's probably still got videos and stills of it to have a look at. Yeah, I, I remember what I, I drove. I was at school once, and I drove into into Scouts. We used to have sc Scouts in the evening. Yes, yes. And I and I drove into the hut in this articulated wheelchair. Stopped the whole thing, and the guy and Ian, the one, one of our staff there, almost fainted. He looked at it and said, "What the hell is that?" Nobody had ever seen it before. So no, I've never, I've never. I'm going to look up that when you've gone uh, a little <laughs> bit later on when I finish the show. Yeah. Well, it'd be nice to see you tomorrow, Rory. I, I look forward to it, Chris. <clears throat> Cheerio, my friend. Enjoy the show, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Rory. Bye, bye, my bye. friend. There bye. we are, Rory in Fulham. Uh, Anne wants to say. Um, my apple puff is quite stuffed. All good. We don't like things with... Our, it's like when you buy um, any sort of pie or anything and you open it up and there's hardly anything in there. It's all blooming pastry. My apple pie is quite stuffed, Chris, but I know what you mean about not having much of a filling. And I do like a good filling. I'm glad you do, Anne. My favourite tart at the moment is a rhubarb one oh, uh, from Morrison's. Oh, I used to grow rhubarb in the garden. Uh, when my, I always remember my mum came here once and she said, um, <clears throat> shall I pick some rhubarb? She said, I can say you've got some in the garden and I'll make you a crumble. I said, yeah, go on then. And so she did and we had the crumble. A little bit later on, I went out into the garden and I'm saying, I'm like, well, where's the rhubarb plants gone, mum? She said, well, I picked them for the, but you're supposed to leave a couple. There was nothing left. <laughs> Never came up again. <laughs> Good old mum. Um, I do, say, I do love rhubarb, especially in the spring. They are full of goodness, just like me. Oh, yeah, but a lot quieter, Anne. You know, rhubarb is a lot quieter than you are. I hope you don't mind me saying that so lovely. I mean that in a caring way. A caring way. Um, my, uh, uh, Anne also says, I do like the Oscars, but get very bored of it after a while. I'm actually looking forward to the Brit Awards coming in the next week or two. Uh, yes, but they have acts on, don't they? They have little girly and boy bands come on and, and mime along to tunes, don't they? It's not proper music, is it, Anne? Come on, girl. There's been nothing good out since ABBA split up. Other than the occasional song by uh, Barry Manilow, of course. But we don't get much new stuff from him anymore. We need more Barry Manilow. That's what we need. She also says the diet has flat lines, uh, but I have taken note of your diet advice. Only one puff Apple puff per week now. Yes, you take that advice. Don't stop eating them all together, because that'll kill you, darling. That'll kill you. Terry likes it when I get angry. Who, me? When did I get angry? When did I get angry, Terry? Matt Martin says, I do, I lo do love the individual apple pies as well. They are simply lovely. They are. Little individual apple pies. Uh, as I was saying, not keen on the Mr. Kipling ones, because it's, it's, it's all mushy. It's just like they've mashed, you know, probably, I don't know, a tiny bit of an apple up, mixed it with something to keep it, you know, from going off, shoved it in a bit of pastry and ten of them in a box or whatever there is, six of them in a box. Um, Peter has told me he's covering me tomorrow. No, he's not. He was covering me last week and next week. I better, I better give him a ring. Thank you for that. Now, what have you sent me there? All oh, pictures of... Is that a picture of... Um, a... Uh, now, why can't I download that? Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Now, can I save this somehow? I'd like to try and save that in a minute. Oh, is someone calling from Bracknell. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Is it the Chinese takeaway? It's not a Chinese takeaway. Oh, it's you again. Are you calling every week now, dear? It's your, it, I'm sorry, first time caller. First, you're, you sound very quiet today. What phone are you on? What, sorry? What phone are you on? I'm on my house phone. Oh, you're really quiet. 
Not like the other oh. two have been on. They were so loud. Oh. Oh. Apple pies. Mm. Not keen on apple pies. Really? Why not? I don't know. I just, I'm not keen on them. But I'm I'm just, I just want to show some I'm people... I'm not keen on that inconsiderate driver put, that parked... Uh, in the alleyway last night that leads into the car park that I had to squeeze through in that great big car of mine. Who's parked I in the car? Who's parked in morning. the... Who's parked there? This is... This is um, I don't know, some idiot in a Fiesta had parked, not on the corner, but actually halfway down the, the, the driveway into the car park. So I oh. put a great big note on his car calling him an inconsiderate beep. And um, not to park there again, because otherwise I was going to let his tyres down. Oh, did did he knock on the door, dear? No, he didn't. Did you not put your address on there so that he love. could um, he could uh, uh, mention it? Mention what? Well, he could come to you and discuss that what the problem was. Yeah, if he knocked on my door, if he had knocked on my door this morning and woke me up, he would have been in a lot of trouble. But let's put it that way. Ah. <laughs> now, can I just show people this picture? One minute. Here we go. There we are. That is a picture of a stair-climbing wheelchair. Did you know there were such things? I'll say that again? Stair-climbing wheelchairs. Did you know there were I've such... I've seen them. They're, they're the ones with the three wheels, aren't they? That's right, yeah. I've just been sent a picture of one uh, from Ben there. So we can see... I've well, never I ever... I didn't know such things existed. Thank you, Ben. Really? They've been out for no, years. Didn't know. I never knew they, were, they existed. Yeah, they've been out for years, dear. Oh, has Ben got one of those then? No, Ben's not in a wheelchair. You will be one day, won't you? Well, hopefully not. But you never know. Will it be like a? Will it be like the Audi of wheelchairs? I suppose you'll have to have one. It'll be like the BMWs of wheelchairs. Yeah, it will be <laughs> definitely. Because you've got your operation sewn on your back, haven't you? Uh, no, I've, I've got an operation on my stomach first. All oh, right, yeah. And then on my back. Can't you so... have a personality transplant? Um, no, well, gonna, sorry. That on you no, that's not work, that's not quite correct, is it? That's not quite correct. Oh, that's I right, said because you've never ever had a personality. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, I'm not a personality transplant. A personality put in. Yeah, you, so, you, so you, you've got the same thing as you've never had a personality, have you? Uh, I've got one. Thank you very much. Ten years yeah. of me talking on the radio. Yeah, with your four listeners. <laughs> well, have you got anything of interest to say? Um, not really. I was just ringing up to say hello, really, and um, I just say, see that I, say, that I caught part of your show, go where you was waffling on for twenty minutes about apple pies. Oh, we like apple pies. One. Are you coming round for tea? No, no. I'm, I'm oh. still very tired, and my, my my back is very very sore today. <sighs> I shall sit here lonely as always. Then. Well, you're a bit. Of a Don't worry person, about really. me. I won't. Oh, no, you'll be fine anyway. You've got Katie to talk to. Yeah. You know, when you say stomach operation, someone wants to know, do you mean lipo? No, I don't mean lipo. I mean stomach operation where they're going to remove uh, part of my intestine. Do they ha I mean, if you speak nicely to them, maybe they won't put them all back in. Well, no, they're, they're removing part of my intestine because where, where, with, with all the tablets that I've taken from my back, it's actually done damage to my stomach. Uh. So See, I told um, you not to take so many pills, didn't I? Well, I have to take them, otherwise I'm in excruciating pain. Uh, so it... what do you do? Do you be, just be, sit there in <coughs> excruciating pain, or do you, do you take tablets? So you take the tablets, dear. But I've always had a bit of a dodgy stomach since I was, since I was a child. You know, that's why I suppose I'm, I'm such a fussy eater, is because... Uh, is because things affect me like that. You know, like how natural products affect you, like wool and things make you scratch. Yes, yes, they you have do. To yes, wear yeah. those cheap man-made stuff. That's what that's what food does to me. I don't enjoy food. Oh, I mean, you wouldn't believe it. But, you well, know, well why, why do you spend eat? such vast sums of money going out to these posh restaurants with your other half? You might as well just go down to the chip shop if you don't enjoy it. No, I don't. I don't I've, I'm, I'm, on, I'm off. I don't like chips in the chip shop at the moment at all. Oh, that's it then. No I go more through phases. I go through phases. At the moment, I like couscous. No more expect. Oh, couscous. I don't like. I don't like the sound of it. I don't no, like it's what very it's nice. just, it is I've very, very nice. Well, I've seen it before. I don't like the look of you. it. It's very good for you. It's Looks very like loads of eggs. Oh. As long as there's no meat in, mixed in with it. it. Does look like a load of eggs. Pardon? It looks, just looks like a load of eggs. 
It doesn't look like it. It looks like, like it looks like rice. Oh, it's horrible looking stuff. You must try it. Uh, all right then. Well, thank you for calling in, dear. Oh, that's all right. I just wanted to. Maybe I thought that maybe the um, the person that parked in a in that very awkward position last night might be listening to your show. Yes. But then I remembered it's not like L, like LBC or BBC Radio London or something, and you have a much less. Yes. Serious. There you go. See you later. Please give me a call when you're finished, dear. Okay. Thank you for calling. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have you gone? Oh, thank God for that, dear. Oh, he does go on and on. Yeah, I don't mind people ringing in if they've got something to say, but quite frankly, I was falling asleep then when my mate was walking in. Do you find that? Some emails coming in. Hello to Sean, who says, um, How are you? Love watching your show. I've now lost one stone. Five. Another two stone to go. You're doing very well, Sean. You carry on, my darling. Carry on. Do not break... Well, now and again, you can have a little item. Perhaps today you might want a little bag of crisps, OK? Uh, good morning to Wayne. Morning, Wayne. A nonny moose who writes, If you don't mind me making a shambles of your show, you don't make a shambles of the show. I can explain how the broadcasting school I attended to in Boston gave us a mix of classes and hands-on experience. I'm having a clearance sale on material for building giant snowmen. Bring your own car cargo ship-sized container. <laughs> and regarding my glasses, I think you look like an eye, ear, nose and bum doctor. Turn your head and cough. <coughs> Oh, I've got no voice here. I did want to tell you a little story. I had a, uh, uh, my, my, my adoption story today, but I don't think we're going to have time to do it. Wayne wants to call in as well. So we're we'll giving him a quick call because I haven't spoken to him for a very long time. And let's, um, I'll tell you what, I'll call you, Wayne. Not on the video, on the other thing. And um, we'll see if he can grab you from that. Ben says it looks like white caviar. What, those... Um, Couscous. It's not my sort of thing at all. Couscous. Uh, morning, Wayne. Do you eat couscous? Uh, no. Hang on a second. I, I got to turn off the, uh, the... Wait a minute. Blasted thing. Uh, there it is. There. Sorry about that. Okay, now I can hear you. Are you still there, Chris? We're here, but we can't hear you very well. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> It helps if I have the microphone in front of me. That sounds <laughs> Is that better. better? That's, That's better, better now, dear. That's better. Good morning, Wayne. Yes. Am I... So oh, wait, hang on. It just says... Is, is it your birthday? Uh, well, I celebrate birthdays at several times a year. <laughs> One of my favorite birthdays is February 29th because yes. I only have to be bothered once every four years. <laughs> okay. And, and my other birthday... Uh, which is actually probably my official birthday. My my parents tried to keep it secret because they were living in Roswell, New Mexico at the time. Right. Uh, was this the same day the UFO crashed? <laughs> yeah. I, I, was that I don't the one? That. What's that area in America where the UFOs? Was it called Roswell, New Mexico? Roswell, is it? Rise, so, rise. No, isn't it Area Nineteen or Area Seventeen or something like that? Uh, they try to tell people that it's Area 51, but right. the actual real name is Area 33 and one third. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> but, uh, it's it's kind of like a never-ending thing. That reminds me. Talk about moral turpitude. I I I, I jumped into your show, and, and you and some other person were cuss cussing this and cuss cussing that, and complaining about the price of food. And I mean, I don't. You you folks are weird. You really are. So. Why is that then? I heard you say couscous -cus or couscous -cous or couscous. whatever. Couscous. Oh, isn't, isn't couscous -cous oh, Arab this, for couscous? -cous -cous oh, it's a horrible looking stuff. Like hu hummus. Oh, that looks disgusting as well. Hummus. <laughs> oh, how can people sit there and eat that stuff when you can have a nice jar of marmalade next to you? Possibly made by my dear sister. I, I cook all my own meals. My grandmother had me cooking... By the time I was 10 years old, I could pretty much cook an entire meal. Yeah. And to this day, my I, my sister will call me on the telephone. She lives on the other side of the river, thank God. <laughs> and, and quite often, the bridges are closed. <laughs> Good uh, job. 
I, 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 I make things for <laughs> and either freeze them or put them in a food storage container and hand them off to Herbie. Her attitude is she raised five children and she refuses to cook anymore. She even hates going to the grocery store. No. She calls me every week before I go grocery shopping and gives me a list of things that she wants and or needs, and I pick them up while I'm in. I like going to the grocery store. Yeah, I, I have do. a chance to chat with people. And to, it's a social experience. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, that's a funny, funny lady not to want to go to... Do you know, even when I go on holiday, I like to go to supermarkets and see see the difference in the stuff they sell. Speaking of holidays, one of my longtime friends, Ian Duff, who lives just outside of Ottawa... In Canada, yes, yes. Uh, I guess that's the de facto capital of the English-speaking part of Canada. Mm. Uh, I, I, he uh, he just sent me a couple of quick messages, and because their temperatures up there have been uh, almost as bad as ours are, are here in right. the central upstate part of New York, the, the cold air just funnels into our valleys, and, and the temperatures have been <laughs> yeah. The, the the actual temperatures have never gotten above zero for days on oh, end. No. Zero is nineteen is minus eighteen yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so our, our temperatures have been like minus 25 Celsius. Right. A couple of mornings it was minus 30. The wind chills have been minus 40 to minus 45. And I, I've been putting on my extreme cold weather clothing and going out and trying to keep up with the the snowfall as it comes down so I can at least get in and out of my driveway and keep the sidewalks clear enough so that the uh, mailman can, you know, hmm. at least have access to my property and... There's a couple senior, senior, senior citizens on my street that rely on me to keep them a path clear to the front of their house so they can get out into the street and jump into a taxi cab or whatever. Yeah. So that I do that strictly for my karma. I figure at some point in time I'll have to answer for my wanton lifestyle, and you know I need all the brownie points I can get. Was you a bad boy in the past? Then were you? Oh, hey, in I've your dated, younger days. I've, I have not only dated, but lived with strippers. Uh, <laughs> there, there's nothing like the flexibility of a pole dancer. I'm here to tell <laughs> And uh, I got the pictures to prove it, too. I'll send you some private emails. Yes. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, I, I... Oh, quickly, before I forget, the broadcasting school thing? Yes, please do. Great great place. Uh, my my so school I, dormitory just... was actually what they called a residence hotel. Right, so Wayne a, went to this school and they yeah, do Yeah, it was a, called the Cambridge School of Broadscattering. Right, broadcasting, yeah. No, broadscattering. Broadscattering. They, 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 they taught me how to, you know, just freak the women out and they'd run screaming down the street. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, most of the students in that school were from Long Island. Long Island, yeah. And they were of uh, Jewish extraction. And spoiled is putting it mildly. Uh, I had a neat racket going. I my, my parents weren't all that wealthy compared to these other students, yes. you know, folks. So I would they would bring me their laundry bags, and I would load them into a taxi cab. I mean, the the poor cab driver, he'd like, man, where are you getting all this stuff from? <laughs> yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd have the whole back seat, the trunk full of laundry bags. Go off to the laundromat do their laundry, bring it back to my room, and I had an assembly line ironing board set up because we were required to wear white shirts and ties to school because their attitude was, we're teaching you to work in a profession, you need to dress like that. Yeah, well, that's how it was years ago. People... I made enough money off of these other people that were too lazy to take care of their own laundry so that I could walk across this bridge and go to the front entrance of Fenway Park and catch some baseball games. Yeah. Or go down into the subway, which was conveniently located right close to where I lived. And it was two miles to the center of town because Boston's laid out like a wagon wheel. Right, yes. And when the weather was nice, I'd just walk down Commonwealth Avenue. I'd put on my, my London Fog trench coat, my Homburg hat, and stuff my pipe in my mouth, and away I'd go. You know. um, I had two really great people that, that helped me a lot in school. One of them was my voice teacher who was a super attractive great legs and knew how to walk a uh, lady by the name of Karen Dolph and Karen had a, a co-conspirator who was our school's um, psychology teacher 
who was a an early version of Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Have you ever seen that lady on television? Dr. Ruth, yes. I yes. actually okay. met her well, once. I met the, her once. This is years ago. She was in the black cap. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, what we were doing there. And she was tiny. She's ever so, ever so short. Yeah, I worked with her once. Well, Just once. Long story short, back then, our school's equivalent of Dr. Ruth was a woman who, who was called Goldie... Kornberg. And needless to say, she was also of Jewish extraction. Yes. These two ladies <clears throat> convinced people that with my last name being what it was that I had to be Jewish. So whenever there was a Jewish holiday, they would excuse me from classes. And then the three of us would go down into the center of Boston and they would teach me different things about the city and its history and stuff like that. Yeah. One time they dragged me into a place called Filene's Basement. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! And that, that it was a, some kind of a sale day for women. I mean, we had to stand in line to get in the store. We get in the store, walk down these stairs, and the ladies are pawing through clothes and this that. All around me, women are like taking off their blouses and trying on clothes and pulling up skirts. And I'm like, oh, terrible! And it didn't, and it did not take much to make me blush. Terrible we, for you to have to be put through such an awful thing. Uh, it, it traumatized me for life. Yes, right? yes. I can Karen imagine. and Goldie got no end of a joy out of watching me turn red like a stop. <laughs> they did reward me, though. There was a private club that Goldie Kornberg belonged oh, yeah. to in Boston that had at one time been a bank. So it was a very stately-looking bank building, and it had a restaurant in it. And when you walked up to the door and, and announced your arrival... A very formal-looking doorman would size you up, and if you had a membership, you had to show him your card, and then he would allow you in. And if the weather uh, required coats, they would take your coats and check them for you. You know, very, very nice formal right. setup. And if you didn't then, have a, then they would you... take you into a, a room, and depending on whether you wanted to be seated with the public or you were having a private business meeting, would determine what what kind of a room they took you into. Right. And I never, I never paid for anything because Goldie had a membership in this club, and she had to use a certain amount of club money credits every month, or she would get charged for it, even though she didn't use it. So she was constantly dragging Karen and I with her to go to this club. So, oh yeah, it, it was rough and tumble. I was, but I, they, they taught me well. I learned my lessons, and and I managed to work in big market broadcasting stations. Yes. Uh, I I tired of being that kind of person very quickly because at that time I was surrounded with people that were doing recreational drugs. Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm, sur I, I, I'm, I sur great, I'm I'm surrounded by that as well in certain places. I took places great offense to that, and yeah. because I would not join in with the rest of them, yes. I was kind of like ostracized. Yeah. Ah, oh, now that you're in the same. I'm in exactly the same boat in you. In in, in I, I, I won't say which one, but there's a certain circle that I work in, and I will not get involved in that. And I really do feel pushed out. You understand what you you know where I'm coming from there, don't you? Oh yeah. I do feel like I'm not part of that. Uh, uh, the, the, and, and there was a, a, a recent thing. I, I, I must be very careful because I don't want to identify it. But it was a recent thing I was working at. And I, I, I very quickly noticed everyone was either very drunk or off their heads. That's the term that we use for people who are doing drugs or whatever. And, you know, it, it gets to the point where these same people who I supposedly work with, not all of them, it has to be said, but a lot of them, it gets to the point where... perhaps they come and ask for... And you know they're off their heads. Because uh, they're coming up... for a second. It's 1,300 hours GMT. Okay. This is London. It's one o'clock. The news from the BBC with Chris Reardon. No, anyway. There's and, been a huge fish and chips fire on a cart yeah, at High yeah, Street. Yeah. Please avoid the traffic congestion. And now back to the studio. Back to the studio. And um, one would come up and ask for a song. And then a minute later they come, were you going to play it or not? Well, this one hasn't finished yet, but I, I don't, I don't give way. If you see what I mean, I don't give way to them. You, know, you've got to stand there, and 
and, and you really do feel, and as you walk away, you feel like they're talking about you. And, and kept out of the group. Well, I don't need to be in a group like that, you know. I do my thing as I want to do it, and that's it. Is that how you were? I believe me. Back then, I was one of the few people in the group that uh, had a budget, knew where my money was going to go, had yeah. a savings account. I would save up my money all year long like a madman so that I could either have a tremendous New Year's Eve celebration. I mean, I'd rent a limousine, buy whatever lady I was dating a new gown so that she would be dressed up because I was wearing a tuxedo. And or we would, you know, take off and go on a trip down south so we could escape the cold winter weather mm -hmm. for a short period of time and, you know, lay out on a beach in Key West in Florida and catch a suntan or whatever. I... I don't know. I just... Uh, but that, doesn't it make you feel sometimes, so you're working in this job and everyone around you is in this little group, doesn't it make you feel incredibly lonely? Oh, you, you didn't have to bring that up. I mean... <laughs> I just, oh, oh, shut wait, up. I, I, hang on a second. I, I gotta... I gotta. <laughs> oh... Oh, God. Uh, okay, I was just... That's come straight down the microphone, that has. Oh, God. Uh, okay, All over wait, my I'm... face. <laughs> No, I just, I just, you know, but I, I, I refuse to be pulled into all that. Usually you see them and you look at them and you think, well, he might go for another six months. He'll go for another year or so. He's just started, you know, that one will pull out of it. That or one you'll won't. see them on Entertainment Tonight. Yeah. Breaking news, just arrested in a drug raid. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. There was um, uh, a red carpet thing for a film recently with Johnny Depp. And obviously, we don't know what was wrong, but the interviewer went in as they came out of the big flash cars on the red carpet, and the interview, oh, hello, Mr. So, Mr. Depp, you know, and, uh, and he took his glasses off, and, it, and I thought, oh, my God, what are you on? You know, maybe... You would, you would think these people know how many weeks, if not months in advance, they've got this event coming up. Yes, yes. He Why was, the hell wouldn't they He was a right effort? state. A right state now. Their head screwed on, yeah. You know. Now, of course, we don't know. Maybe there was something wrong with him. We don't know that. But to me, he looked like he was completely off his head and barely knew what he was saying. It was awful, awful. This is on a This is on the evening news that we had it on. And I think we... it's probably the cheap booze that they put in the limousine. <laughs> I'd, I'd bring my own bottle. I mean, what the. You know. Only the good, only Mr. Jim Bean for you. Are you a Jim Jim Bean fan? Are you? Uh, no, I, <coughs> I stick pretty much to Ron Bacardi light rum. I cannot stand that spice stuff. It does not sit well with my stomach. Right. And um, so I and and plus I can't drink caffeine, so that it has to be Ron Bacardi light rum with caffeine-free Pepsi and some ice, and right, I'm yeah. I'm happy. You know. Yeah. Good. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, as always, Wayne. Well, it's it's been an experience talking to you as usual, and uh, I <laughs> those glasses, though that that you impressed me so much with those. That works, does it? They're only ten quid, about sixteen dollars, fifteen dollars. Yeah, I do the same thing. I mean, I, I was nearsighted, uh, very nearsighted, when I was a young lad. And they told me back then that as I went through life, my eyes would gradually get better and better. Yes. And they've reached the point where I can now drive my automobile without having to wear my glasses. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll be damned <laughs> if I'm going to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on glasses. Because I That's have right. to take my glasses off to read, you know, so like. <laughs> you know. Thanks for calling in, Wayne. Uh, again, you know, have a pleasant day to you, and uh, we're we're going to be experiencing another uh, half a foot of snow here overnight. Oh, really? I, I can yeah. hardly wait, and, oh. and I have to get my driveway clear because on Sunday mornings, my I, if I don't meet my social group on time, people are standing around going, "Where is he? Is, is he sick? Is he okay?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did a jealous husband finally oh, shoot that, him. You know? Do you know that happens if I'm late with a show? Because I try and get my daily shows up at about 12, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If I'm late with a show, you do start getting emails. Is everything all right? You know? Yeah. 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 Oh, speaking of emails, I will be sending you ones in the foreseeable future. Yes. Um, I've started rewriting other people's songs. And uh, one of them 
that I've had, I think, good success with, and the people on the karaoke show seem to to enjoy it, um, are uh, the Carpenters. Oh, I like the Carpenters. Um, are, are you familiar with the song Solitaire? Yes, and Solitaire's the only game in town. Yeah, well, I, I rewrote that song um, so that instead of a lonely man, it's a lonely woman. Yes. Uh, because Karen Carpenter actually led a very lonely, isolated life. Yes, she life. did. Yes, she shame. did. Yes, yes. So mm. I, I changed the wording and dedicated that to her, and uh, it's, it, the people seem to respond well to it. Mm. So mm. when I get that recorded in an appropriate style, I will make it into an MP3 and stick Send it in it. the electronic mailbox, cross my fingers, and see if it makes it through the undersea cables to you. Send it over. Oh yeah, we'll do that. So, but one of these days, I am. I'm just going to pop up at one of your karaoke. Shows. I know you I'm, are. I'm, I'm, I'm I know. not going to announce myself. I'm just going to stick are. in my slip, and <laughs> you're going to you're going to go. What the? Do you know a, a radio guy called Richard Hanna? Uh, I know a Hanna Hart, uh, Richard Hanna. I know I've heard the name. Richard, a uh, black guy, does some radio stuff. No internet radio stuff. Oh, okay, that explains why I know the name. Nice bloke. Yep, yeah. uh, and he turned up. He just turned up once. Hello, I'm Richard. I said, I know you, didn't I? Yeah, Richard from Global Radio something or something. He just turned up at a karaoke night, completely unannounced. Yeah, I'm hoping, I, I love to do I, that. I, I, well, I'm hoping I, Barry Manilow does that one day. I do that around town here because I, people have heard stories about me and my, my vocal talents. Yes. But I, I never make a big deal out of it. I go someplace, I try to go places where I either have never been before or don't show up very often, and I just drift in. And they'll usually, when they realize it's me, take my two or three songs and put them, you know, nose to tail. Yeah. So I do my thing and pick up my toys and run out the door. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, you didn't hear me there. I'm hoping that Barry Manilow turns up at one of my karaoke nights completely unannounced one day. He's already been. You didn't, you didn't recognize him? Oh, go on, get off with you. <laughs> I, know, I, know he's, I know he's been to at least three or four of them. In disguise. <clears throat> well, sort of, yeah. I mean, you know, you have to understand when he when he shows up on stage, he's gone through the hair and makeup thing. I know, I know. I but know. when he goes out for karaoke, you know, he, he doesn't do that. So you're not really going to recognize him. No. I mean, he's got crow's feet and he's got the turkey flap thing going yeah, haven't on. Yeah, have we all? Down there on his neck. And, haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I'll see you, Wayne. Cheerio, my friend. Arriba Derche, and may the force be with you. And you too. ta da There we are, Wayne Anonymous USA. Nice to talk to that chap there. Um, Terry Yates says, well, ranting about your glasses, do you pay for Amazon Prime? No. No, I don't. Um, I think... Stuff seems to come to me pretty quickly anyway whenever I order something. So I don't need that. And plus, I don't subscribe to... I don't have any subscription television at all, Terry. Nothing at all. No Amazon Prime, no Sky, no Netflix. I think if I was to, was to have it, I'd probably get Netflix. That seems to be quite popular with people. So, But no, I don't have that. Anne says, Chris, I would love to grow rhubarb sometime as I have green fingers, but I'm not an alien but a noisy human from planet Lewisham. Well, we all know... Oh, uh, oh I've missed, missed something from you there. Roswell in America is where they supposedly found an alien, Chris. Yes, I remember this, yeah. If you do an intergalactic broadcast from another planet, what one would it be? Jupiter. Quite like that name, Jupiter. Probably Jupiter. Yes. But there must be, I, I, I often, oh, I, don't, I don't want to go into this now, it's already ten past one. There must be other life on other planets out there, don't you think? How can we possibly be the only things in existence at all different stages? Some bacteria, some on a higher level than us. There must be other life out there, mustn't there? Um, I would love to grow rhubarb. Yeah, it's quite easy. You just go out and buy a crown of rhubarb and put it in the ground, that's it. It's very easy to grow rhubarb, Anne, all right? She says, um, last week you forgot to dedicate your show to those of us in Lonely Land. Oh, please, you're not lonely, Anne. You're always surrounded by friends. Take Sean, for example. He's your friend, isn't he? Little Sean. Are you coming to the cherry tea tomorrow, Anne? You'll meet Rory if he comes down. And Sean, 
come along tomorrow. Don't worry about that other business. Just come down to the cherry tree on Sunday. Um, Anne says, Abba, amazing. I love the song. Thank you for the music. The songs I'm singing. My favourite Abba songs are Super Trooper, One of Us and That's Me. They're my favourite Abba songs. There's always something for everyone at the Brits, but as I get older, the modern music of today seems more weird and obscure. <laughs> Me too. Me too, Anne. I don't think it will last the test of time like the era we grew up in. Well, you don't see... You see, the thing is with that, you don't see techno nights. Do you remember techno? You don't see an oldies night playing techno, do you? It kind of came and it went and it never came back. So you, you might well be right there. I like a bit of cheesy Eurovision, and I'm wondering, will you be hosting a gig somewhere that night in May? No, not doing a Eurovision thing. Wayne has left a colourful, led a colourful life, certainly spiced up his morning. Wayne is very, very intelligent man, very humorous. We love Wayne. He doesn't call in enough. Can you do a midweek live show, Chris, on a Wednesday night? Do late night chat show? Well, uh, funny enough, I'm off Wednesdays. I could, I suppose. I could do a Wednesday night chat show. I don't know. Uh, you are the best bacteria doing online radio. <laughs> I am a live walking bacteria, Anne. I really am. Uh, Matt Martin says, I wanted to call in today as I had not done so in a couple of years now, but it appears everyone else had something the same idea. Yes, I think you're right. Matt, give us a call next week. It'd be lovely to talk to you on the show. You're right, it has been a couple of years, and I shall I shall make at least 10 minutes available for you. Maybe 20. Next week, Martin, I shall exp In that case, I shall leave a gap in my schedule. I shall leave a gap. That's it. Um, now, we didn't get to the... Uh, do you know what? I didn't get to anything I was going to do today, did I? I didn't do the adoption story or anything like that. I'll do it in one of the short shows next week, all right, boys and girls? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Uh, if you want to know where to find those, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Click the union flag at the top of the page and that will take you to all the shows there. Or halfway down the page, you'll see two video boxes. On the left is the most recent Saturday show and on the right is the most recent short show okay the two most recent shows are always there oh here we go Terry wants a live show on Wednesday night as well a late late night live show on Wednesday oh I don't know about that I'd have to I'd have to arrange it I think I've got something on this Wednesday I can't remember what uh, and Kieran says please pass on my love to Anne how kind is that? <coughs> and Daniel, yes. Yes, I did. In the 90s. Okay, in the 90s, that was. That's all today, boys and girls. Uh, I've just about got a little bit of voice left to say thank you for watching and listening. I'd just like to mention Angel, who is manager of a pub halfway to heaven, who downs lo loads, who downloads the audio version of this and plays it through his little earphones while he's doing... Um, uh, cellar work and bottling up and things like that I think in his pub at Halfway to Heaven uh, in central London down by uh, Charing Cross Station so hello Angel thank you very much for watching and listening the email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk it'd be nice of you to send in a message perhaps talk to you and, uh, and, and reply to that on one of the shows see you next Saturday for another live show at 12 bye bye now <laughs>